So hi there everyone. How are you? Can you all hear me okay? Hi Marjorie, how are you? I found my inks Marjorie. After my little panic the other day, they were sitting in some corner that they don't usually sit in. I must admit I was lost without them, but the two that I use the most often. Um, but thankfully I found them now. So let's just check. Uh, where is your... Okie dokie. Oh, lots of people here. Hi, hi Beverly. Hi Connie. Hi Carol. Um, what else we got? Hi Margaret. Um, and Debbie. Hi Helen. Who else have we got? Hi Kim. That's a new name. I don't recognise that one. Have been joining us before. Lovely to have you here if you are new. If you aren't, then apologies. When I actually get demoing, I forget to look up. So I don't always see anyone else who joins. But I do read all your comments and say hi once I've finished. Um, and I go back and read everything. Hi, Grandma Bonnie. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Helen. Hi, Andrea. Oh, there we are. Really interested in this dye. Ah, it's new to try, is it? Okay. Right, well, I think today, um, as I said, I'll be using the ruffled lace frame. I'll be mainly using these stencils, but, and I won't be embossing it, but I can show you um, how to line it up and how to um, sort of line it up with the embossing folder if you like before I go ahead and sort of carry on with the rest of the demo if you like but um, with this one in particular a lot of people like to see it being stenciled because um, of the colour choices for it because there's quite it's quite intricate well it's very intricate actually and so it just takes perhaps just a little bit of practice just to get the colour combinations and the colour layers right because if you start off with a too dark a colour I think you then struggle to build up the detail on top of that. So starting off with um, a base neutral colour and then allowing that to build up, it just help, helps you with your colour choices and helping you sort of build the design. So this is the card I was going to make today. Let's move that across for you. So what you can actually see, I've stenciled it into the background twice. Um, it's quite pale, but also what I've done I don't know if you can see, but the texture on here is not the embossing folder for the lace frame. It's actually the embossing folder for the sandstone wall. And what I've done, I've actually used this uh, lace frame today as a way to create a background. Now I do have a live on Thursday as well this week and what I'm planning to do for the foreseeable future when I have two lives in the week is use the same main um, collection. So on Thursday I will also be using the lace frame again but next time, that time, I will make sure that I um, emboss it and or die cut it as well for you so you can just see how it can be used um, in its entirety as a a whole collection but today I'm just wanting to create a background with it now I've created a, a really nice sort of sweet simple little embellishment here with a really nice fun font so this um I've got somebody in mind of who I'm going to send this one to um so that's how I created that and those flowers that I've used there today is a sweet little set actually it's one that was um from a very long time ago it's the flower blooms it's a slimline collection and you get these layer and stencils and you also get your slimline 3d embossing folder and dies to go with it but what happens you actually stencil emboss and die cut well you stencil and emboss all of these flowers individually 
and then you die cut them all out so you end up with lots of little elements like this so there's no um, foliage or anything with this you're basically just cutting out uh, flower heads so it's a really nice useful little set to build um, floral bouquets so that's what I've used here alongside um, the sentiment and just a couple of black die cuts which are exactly the same as these flowers but I just cut them in black to provide a bit of a shadow but what's happened this morning postman came this morning with a very exciting delivery and I have had the um, brand new products delivered I've had the floral thunder elements delivered so again layer and stencils and the die with embossing folder so what I was thinking it's entirely up to you of course I could open these up and say they're not even open yet so it's completely sealed they literally had sort of landed with me about half an hour ago I could open these up and I can stencil die cut and emboss these to go on the front of the card instead so at least that way I'm making a separate card so if you're in agreement with that let me know if you want to see these this is what is um, appearing on the shows with Lisa at four o'clock this afternoon. So this is the brand new um, collection launching. So if you'd like to see these in action, let me know. Um, it might be quite a nice way to say these are completely new to me. So I'll be opening these up and stenciling them along with you, um, just as you would as when you arrive through your door. So they say brand new. So luckily the postman arrived this morning. So I should get going, so I should create a nice background with them for I think the vase and um, the elements might actually sit really nicely on there. So I think that was quite a nice idea. It's almost as if I knew they were coming. <laughs> um, I knew they were on their way, but I just didn't know when uh, they were going to arrive. Um, fortunately, it was today. Also, what I've had right -hand delivered today is my tacky mat. Now, I've left that in the other room, um, but what I'll do, I'll have a play with that and um or should i go and get it now because it might actually help with this two ticks two ticks okay back again i just left it in the kitchen see i've had my tacky mat arrived as well and a lot of the um, the background, background techniques that I've been doing for you over the past couple of weeks would really benefit from having the tacky mat and give you that confidence to give it a go. So maybe let's open this now with you and let's, let's have a go, shall we? Now, I've seen Lisa talking about this, so I sort of know how it works. So let's just see how we go with this, shall we? Let's open up the packaging. So we can take away, because normally I'd be using my um, magnetic mat with the Ultimate 2, so therefore I can keep things in place with the magnets here. But let's give this tacky mat a try. So this is our overlay which will go underneath, I'm assuming, because obviously we don't want to uncover the tacky mat. So we need to take off the protective seal of these. So, nice, super clean. So what we'll do, we can now lay this on here. So bear with me a second, just as I line this up. And want this lined up on the um on the grid and we want this lined up against our our pegs as well so let me just do this so bring my head in a little bit actually I'll move this down so bear with me too okay let's see how we do this so if I put that on there, I'll just line that up. Hopefully I'm doing this just right. 
that should just not going to be in that way. It needs to go in the other way. I mix the things. So this is me learning as I go. So this would be how you'd be dealing with this when you get home. So there we are. That fits in nicely. What I've done, I've just lined up the edge of the tacky mat against the top of the um, the grid there. So therefore, the tacky mat now sits up against those pegs. So it looks like we're all ready to go. I've picked up a little bit of debris there. But I think that's easy enough taken off there. That's because I've got a big really jump on today, I think. There we are. So there we are. That fits in perfectly. Now, there is... Um, a right way and a wrong way to put that in it seems it seems it's slightly longer than it is wider but you'll easily find that out when you have that so that's my tacky mat set up so let's put that over there let's get myself sorted so we can start creating this background now let's have a see um look forward to you um now we know what to do with it. yeah that's it it's it's nice just to see um i know lisa's used it loads and loads and loads um so the so i'm almost familiar with it without actually having to um had hands on it myself so it literally has just arrived as you saw right so i'm going to start with the laying stencils let's move that out of the way because there's a big glare on there isn't there so laying stencils for the ruffled Frame. there's four in this collection so it's as intricate as this die um this design is there are only four stencils so it's super easy to stencil it really is um i say i think the trickiest thing about this really is choosing and deciding on the colors that you're going to to use for this now as you can see from the card here i'm actually working on to a um well, making a five by seven card, the layer isn't five by seven. The layer is cut from the nested scallop and stitch rectangles there. So let me just um, let me add this for you. There we are. So this is what I've, I'm actually using today. So the the layers here are created from the nested sketch, stitch and scallop rectangles the background and the embossing of the background are created with the sandstone wall art stencil and the coordinating embossing folder um, we've gone through the ruffled lace frame the flowers are from the Flower Blooms. Again, it's a collection, full collection with stencils, embossing folder and dies. The sentiments are from the Shadowed Word stamps and dies. It's really nice, fun and useful sentiment set. So I've cut myself the layer already from the stitched rectangles. Um, now, I'm all, all about myself at the moment, sorry, I've got a cold as well today, so I'm dealing with, with the snuffles there. So what we need to do first of all is create the sandstone background. So I'm going to stencil it first. You don't have to do this if you just wanted to stencil or just create the texture from the background. You could just stencil your lace frame first and then emboss over the top of it but i do want a little bit of color in the background alternatively if you've got a really nice pale piece of cardstock you can stencil your lace frame straight onto colored cardstock and then emboss with the sandstone afterwards so but i want to add a little bit of shade in here so i'm going to use the almond frosting so I'm going to show you the colours I'm using here. I used these colours the other day when I was um, done a bit crafting with mum online, actually. I had these colours already on my desk and they worked really well. So I've got painted eggshell, I've got antique pink, 
almond frosting and garden sage. So the whole thing is going to be nice and vintagey colours and quite muted, um, but it works really well. If obviously you choose different colours, they're going to have a whole different feel, but the technique will still work. So almond frosting to create the background. My layer is smaller than the stencils, but that's no problem at all. So all I'm doing is just taking some ink and just blending that on. I'm not going too mad because obviously we want to stencil over the top of this, but I'm just going to put enough ink on the cardstock to allow the sandstone wall detail to be seen. Basically, I will concentrate a little bit more ink around the outside edges because that gives um, the framing effect or the framed effect on your layer. But again, you work to however your blending technique suits you. So this is staying quite pale at the moment, but you'll see in a second when I take the stencil away that there is actually ink on there. Now this is a very delicate stencil, so I will go um, err on the side of caution with this one and just build up your ink really slowly. Now, although the cardstock is fully secure with the tacky mat underneath, the stencil obviously is quite delicate. So what I'm doing, I'm just holding um, with my full hand just to give that stencil some stability when I'm running the blending brush over the top of that. And you don't need to press hard with your blend, um, blending brush to put the right amount of ink on. So just slowly and steadily, you will build up those ink uh, colours and the layers. So I'm just moving in. So I'm picking up only a small amount of ink at a time. And I'm just working into all of those areas. Now, what occasionally I will do is just lift the stencil just to make sure that I am putting the ink down. And all I've done now, it might be easier if you turn your ultimate around, but I'm just holding the stencil again on this side. Um, it looks a little bit awkward, although I'm crossing my hands and um, my arms over, but it's, it's actually quite comfortable to do this. But holding the stencil the full length like that does give this um, these more delicate stencils a lot more stability, which does mean that you can run your stencil brush gently over the top and just create that detail. So I'm just going to put a little bit more around the edges. So we've got that nice framed look. Um, almond frosting is a really nice colour to do this on top of. The other colours would be that would work would be painted eggshell, a really nice egg, a layer of that, or cobblestones, dolphin grey would work really well and also um, straw hat. I think those are really nice sort of base neutral colours that you would then be able to stencil completely different designs over the top of and it not um, sort of encroach on the design. So I shall leave it there. I could possibly have gone a little bit more but obviously time is of the essence here. So you can see now as I take that away I'm just going to peel that off now because I am changing stencil designs. But we have a really nice detail going on there. Um, it really is just to enhance the embossing that I should be doing later on. But because we're putting other designs on the top of this, we really don't want to sort of cover this up too much. So now we can come on to our ruffled frame stencil. Now I'm wanting to create a background so I don't want to put our ruffled frame right in the middle. You can do obviously, um, entirely up to you. But the way I'm doing this, I'm going to put two, two frames on. So the way I'm going to do this, and this is the advantage of the tacky mat now, and I know I've been chatting about this the past couple of weeks, but it's nice for you to see it in action now. I'm going to put my stencil on first. And what I'm going to do, I'm now going to just position my cardstock underneath and find the best way that that sits. So before I allow my cardstock to sit on the tacky mat, in which case, you know, it will be secured, um, I'm just going to move this around. And this is the design. And I want to this to come in off the corner. So I'm going to settle that there. Now, it means that my 
cardstock isn't moving anywhere. So when I move and change my stencils, which are also set against the tacking mat actually, um, everything will continue to line up. You're not going to worry about this um, jarring or being jolted or if you had your magnetic um, mat underneath, you would be obviously holding this with your magnets. Um, there's no need for all of that now. So this is going to give you a huge amount of confidence to do these um, slightly off the wall techniques where, where you don't have your cardstock butted up into the pegs or the corner of your ultimate. So let's get stenciling. I'm going to start off with um, antique pink. This part of the design is going to have extra detail on top of it and it's always worth keeping your packaging next to you because Lisa has done a good job of directing us and just giving us an idea of where the design is going. Okay, so um, even if it's not the colours that you would choose, it does give you an idea of how the design builds. So I'm going to use the antique pink and put this into here. Um, again, I'm probably keeping this quite subtle more because we're not making this the main focal point. So I should be quick and just lay this in there quickly because I have lots to get through. Um, and again, this antique pink is a really nice colour to be able to build on top of. Um, we, I suppose we're creating quite a vintage look here. So that's, you can see our stencils, <laughs> they sit on that so easily, so nothing is moving. So if you want absolute security with your stenciling, um, along with the peg system and the tacky mat, I think you're set to go. I think your confidence in stenciling is going to increase no end. So stencil number two, I'm going to come in with painted eggshell. Again, I'm going to keep this relatively um, neutral. We're building colour on top of the pink that we've already added. Um, I'm concentrating the ink by going round, so we're creating a bit uh, a form of shadow or ombre blending without actually trying too hard. Now with these stencils I found that you could, there's different elements, there's lots of little elements around the outside which in effect um, sort of sit on their own. If you want just the main detail of this design you could um, not stencil these areas on the outside and then you have like a smaller rosette. So there is lots of options with this stencil in particular. So that's the layer number two. And you can see, hopefully, let me just lift that. You can see how that painted eggshell is now sitting on top of the pink, which is why you um, just need to bear in mind a little bit your base colour that you're starting to stencil with. So stencil three, we have an awful lot of detail in here, and I'm a, a, I am going to use two colours. So I'm going to come in with Garden Sage um, and work that into most of the details here as I go around. But again, as this pattern builds, there's an awful lot of other detail around the outside and I'm going to avoid that with the Garden Sage and come in with the Almond Frosting in a second. Um, that's not to say that you can't use the same colour all the way along. It really does depend on the design you're doing at the time. And I will use this again on Thursday and attempt to create something entirely different just to show how versatile this is. So now I'm coming in with um, almond frosting. So these details around the outside, Hazel's agreeing with me there. <laughs> so these details just sort of around the outside, I want to be more tinged with um, almond frosting so that will blend into the background a lot more. Um, 
And if you blend garden sage and almond frosting together to create a form of shading, it works really, really well. Um, okay. So there we are. You can see just how subtle it is. Really, really subtle in the background. It creates a really nice design paper for you, um, even if you were to do no embossing with this. And actually, maybe I could leave it as it is. And I'll show you the difference between that because when I do emboss it with the sandstone wall, it changes its look completely. I was quite surprised. So this is the last stencil. If we get that on quickly, and I'm doing this with almond frosting. Again, these are really nice little accent colours, which if you were doing this design a lot bolder, you could go really bold with this, or you could use like an interference ink as well, just to highlight. But again, I'm keeping this quite neutral as we go. Um, and I'm doing this quite quick as well, because I'm creating like a background. I'm not too worried if I don't get an absolute perfect blend and stencil image through this. So I'll take that off. You can see just how pretty that is sitting there with that background. So that in itself, even just with the stamped um, sentiment across, it would be ideal if you're creating like a set of notelets or if you needed a super quick card. But I want to put some more detail in here. I want to put another of the frames here. So now I can lift my design from the tacky mat, you can see it hasn't moved and you can see um, it is stuck there, but it doesn't take too much effort to come off and it's not curling the card when you peel it off of there. Um, so now we want to think about the next positioning. To do that, I am going to find one of the largest stencils because of the way that this works it's like a rosette and each stencil builds out the design so the later stencils have the widest area of the design okay so use that if you're lining it up now obviously this time i've got limited space so what i don't want to do is have this frame overlapping this one so i've gone for one of the larger stencils to line that up. So I'm going to put the stencil down first because it then makes it easier for me to position my cardstock underneath. Now, this is completely symmetrical all the way around. So it doesn't matter what part of this design you use. Um, it's just dependent on where you can fit your cardstock. You're obviously not going to use this part of the design and put it there because your cardstock is going to come off your ultimate. So you want your ultimate sitting, uh, you want your cardstock sitting flat. So you've got the ability just to shift and move that about. Okay, and just get that right positioning. So I think I'm going to put that there. That looks just about right. This design isn't encroaching on what I've already stenciled. I know that that's going to sit there now with confidence, so I can take away the stencil, put this back into its place. This, incidentally, was stencil number three. So I can put that back into order, and then we can start again from the beginning. So stencil number one. You will be stenciling far less um, than you realise with these ones, but don't worry, the design will build. So we have antique pink. Again, I'll come in and do this. Now, the beauty of doing this this time around, you can see the intensity of what you've already stenciled. So build up this colour slowly until it matches what you've already done here. That way, both areas of the design will look um, almost the same. They're never going to be the same, because are they, because of the nature of the stenciling. But again, I think when you're creating a background, I think that's fine. So stencil number two, got that, a little bit more detail coming in. So painted eggshell. Um, it might be worth <laughs> also either lining up your inks in the order that you use them. So you put the same ink through the same layer stencil or perhaps just write it down. Because if you're using something a little bit more 
um, intricate and you're using more colours, you may forget, um, or maybe that's just me. <laughs> Um, you may do a better job of, of remembering. But you can see now how this is building and the positioning of the rosette just down here. And again, even with these ones, you don't have to use the whole design. If you're happy with what you just stenciled there, leave it at that. You know, just because we have the four stencils to build up this sort of design doesn't mean you have to use them all. Okay, so stencil number three. This is where we introduced the garden sage, wasn't it? So, garden sage for the most part, and then we'll add some sand, um, almond frosting just around the outside. So, you can see this time around, this is a lot quicker to stencil because we're only using about a quarter of it here. Now, depending on the size of the project that you're making, this would work for... Um, a square project, a 6 by 6 or even an 8 by 8 or even an A6 card as well. So it's a really nice uh, technique to use for any shaped cards. So remember I just bring in the almond frosting just on these extra fancy details around the outside. So I'll just blend that in like so. And you can see, actually, this tacky mat is doing the job. And what I didn't think about at the time when Lisa was talking about it is how well it actually holds the stencils for you because there can be a little bit of movement on some of these stencils, um, just the nature of fitting or cutting a hole and allowing the pegs to go through. Um, that is going to even stop all of that slight um, wiggle room. So I think it really will help a lot of people in their stenciling, certainly build a lot of people's confidence and try new things. So a lot of the lives that I've done since coming back from Christmas, the new year, are sort of background based and a lot of those will benefit from having the tacky mat underneath. So um, if you did fancy trying something different and you receive your tacky mat soon or you have it on order, it might um, and you fancy trying something different, perhaps just go back and give those a rewatch, and it might just give you the confidence to give that a go. So there we are, we can take that out. And that, I'll move that way, because that, there's a glare there. And that looks so pretty. And you can see the difference actually, let me just bring this one up. You can see the difference, it changes when you emboss it. So, I don't know, I don't know whether I prefer it like this or prefer it like that. But perhaps, shall I emboss it? Let's go to you and let's, let's take that away now. What do you think? Should I emboss this or should I leave this as it is? Let's go down to the bottom. What's everybody saying? What's this saying, Lorraine? The measurements are printed on the corner of the mat so you know which way to place it. Uh, oh, yes, it is actually. Yeah, I did put that the right way round. That was lucky, wasn't it? But you've also got tacky mat here as well, so as long as the writing is the right way round for you. Uh, yes, emboss it, okay. That was Connie. <laughs> I won't need asking twice. Okay, Sandy, no worries. It'll be on YouTube ready for you to catch up. Take care. Right, so now I'm going, let me just move this out of the way briefly. So now we need to emboss this. Now there is a right way and a wrong way to emboss this to match up with the designs that you have on the stencil. So looking at it, I need to put it this way around. So basically I've had to turn it upside down and just take your time. No, it's not that way at all, it's that way. There we are. So I can emboss that. So all I'm doing is just lining up the brickwork basically to 
where I've stenciled and then that will but this embossing folder is actually quite forgiving so if you do get it slightly off um, it really doesn't matter too much okay so there we are so we take it out now you can see that that's embossed and do you see what i mean it does actually change your stenciling it sort of takes the colors right down it makes them even more muted but i think it works really nicely um i think it would work for a lot of other different embossing folders as well actually um there's a couple of other wood panel ones and things so it might be worth trying it with other different you know with different designs i quite like the way that that's turned out um, and it's not dissimilar to what I've done there actually so yeah that would work really nicely now what do we think shall I create the embellishments from the new Floribunda um, sets that we've had through because I have had a couple of where are we I have a couple of the flowers that I die cut from before from the no, we're all over the place now. So from the flower blooms, I have a couple of that I've already cut and coloured in, stenciled and die cut. So we can arrange these on here. And I'll pop those just on there now, and hopefully you can see that it really comes to life when you put the black shadow of these flowers underneath. Um, I tried it with a different colour, but I think black just really works. It just brings them forward and I think you need it just to make them pop from the background because I've used the same colours. And then I pop a third one under there and then I would layer my sentiments over the top of that so that's how um that would actually come together um if you were using little elements like this but why i will use the new ones because i'm intrigued to see how they work and also um they've got some foliage in there as well so i'll just move those to one side and that okay i have some card stock so to start with I think we need to stencil don't we so I'm just going to open this up okay ah and it's there a lovely little um, A6 set so cute little dinky stencils as I call them <laughs> um, and they seem uh, the only reason I say that they seem a lot smaller because we're so used to using like 6 by 6 stencils and 5 by 7 stencils from Lisa so when these little um, A6 ones come along, I think they look really cute. So we can stencil all of the elements all in one go. So this is a set of six stencils. Move that to one side. We should put that over there. We'll use them in a second. So if I bring back in my ultimate, put that there. Stencils. Now, my piece of cardstock can go right up against the pegs this time around because we can stencil as we go. Now, we've got lots of different elements on these, so we will need to be using different colours as we go. So, we have the uh, flowers. So, we have two lots of flowers, so I might just do... Should I do them all the same colour? Yeah, let's get going to start with. So we stencil with a pink. So this is the first time I'm using these. So I'm going to come in with the antique pink. So give that the nice base to start with. And then you can start building colour on the top of that, I think. So I'm going to do all the flowers the same colour at the moment. I might treat them a little bit differently a little bit as we go on when we come on to the different stencils okay so i'll stencil those in i'm going to come in with my stencil brush and just create um 
just some shadow along around the outside of some of them and that is easier done with a stencil brush I think at this stage okay so I should add the colour like that these ones are let me see this one I might go all the way around and this just creates a bit of a shadow and just makes the outside just that slight bit darker um, okay so here we have the top of the vase so that looks like the outer rim you can see here yeah it looks like the outer rim the color so what i need to bear with that in mind and i think what i might do that with is the what colors have we got going on here oh, frosting I might do that with the almond frosting okay and then I'll come around and do the rest of the vase in the painted eggshell, I think, when we get to that. So I'm going to put the almond frosting into here. Now, do remember, if you don't get it quite right on these layers to start with, we can always come back to them just to, just to see how it goes. So stencil number two, we've obviously got some detail coming in to the flowers. So we will go with the antique pink again for these roses. So I'm going to start from the centre of the flower and just gradually work that outwards. And just have a check to see how that's going. Okay, so we should work that around and we have uh, this rose the same, I think. So I always work from the centre so we get the most um, colour in the centre of the flower there. Let me just add a little bit more in I think like that. Actually do you know what I've got sitting here? I've got an opal blush sponge from the interference now. I don't know how much colour I've got on there but I'm just going to add just a tiny little bit. Not to add necessarily the mica but just to add a little bit of extra colour there. Just along one edge, I think, just to add a little bit of something. Yeah, I agree too, Hazel. <laughs> I don't know what she's barking at. Okay, so these little flowers, I shall come in with um, the almond frosting, I think, just to give that a slight different tone to these flowers sitting here. Okay, so there we are. It's looking pretty. Um, right, stencil number three, we have the centre of uh, the little flowers and the vase, okay. So the centre of the flowers I'm going to do painted eggshell, just to give them a dark look. And then I'm just going to come in with a brush and start blending the, the urn here. So I'm going to start off at this corner and work upwards. So we have a bit of a shade going on. So we have um, a concentration of colour down on this side and possibly on this top corner here. So hopefully the idea is that that will just give us um, like a bit of a 3D look and a bit, a bit of shading on there. And although I'm concentrating the ink on down this part, it is still encroaching onto the centre without even me really thinking about it. So that's a really nice way to, to blend. So although I'm concentrating on this bit, and I'll start on this top corner. Oh there, we have the shadow going on in there as well, okay. So I'm gonna work into this top corner as well. And also we have the center, like the inside of the bar, so we want a good shadow going on on the inside there, don't we, I would say. And just a little bit more ink around the underside of that rim there, because that's where a shadow would be sitting as well. So that's where I'm going to put the ink. Now, obviously, I'm using the same colours as I've used in the background, although I'm using these a lot, with a lot more intensity, because they are the same colour, 
it's all going to blend beautifully so I don't need to give that too much thought so but look at that look how that bars has come out isn't that pretty but even the almond frosting and the painted eggshell together just look lovely don't they so now we have what we got going on here we've got some leaves and the foliage going on so I think what I'll do I'm going to start off with the garden sage because we have that on the background already so I'm going to give myself a base layer of that um, to start with and what I'll then do I'll highlight these leaves just slightly with a bit of woodland moss um, mainly because I can't help myself it's my favourite green but two I think it will just add that extra little bit of vintage colour and just a bit of a point of difference which I think the arrangement might need so that's the base layer of the uh, garden sage so I'm bringing the woodland moss and I'm going to use a brush for this a uh, blending brush initially I think so I don't want to go too wild with a different colour and I'm just going to sort of swipe that into the apertures there like that. And the same on this side. And I think I'm just going to check the colour, the colour see where the colour's going with that. And I think I can possibly afford to come in just a little bit heavier with the brush now. Um, I didn't want to overcommit initially and find that I ruin it. But I think I can add just a little bit more now, perhaps a little bit more to these details here because it's a slightly different leaf and nice amount on here. Okay, I might just go a little bit darker just at the base there. Okay. There we go. I think that's working really nicely actually. The, it's just changed the green a little bit so we have uh, stencil five so this is a different type of foliage and I think actually what I might do just come in straight away with the woodland moss that would be quite make that quite striking I think so it's just that little idea there and then the details on the flowers and the stalk going into there um i think what i might do i might come in really quite heavy with the painted eggshell so that branch um you could use a brown but i haven't got the time to go looking for ones but um it would be a good idea for you at home it would work really well but i'm going to come in really dark with that painted eggshell and then just give that a hint of uh, green with woodland moss over the top and that would just make that dark enough to stand out I think and then we have some details on the little flowers here so definitely I'm going to use the antique pink on that that will layer nicely on top of the uh, almond frosting that we used so how's it looking how's Oh, Kim in Alaska. Oh, it's 5, 5.40 in the morning. You're getting ready for work. <laughs> what time do you start work, Kim? You must start work very early. Okay. Well, thanks for sticking with me. So it's interesting to see how these things come together. So this is the first time playing with this. So that's looking really nice. I'm really pleased with that. So we put those to one side and now what we can do is open our embossing folder. And I think also, you know, um, this is one of the first sets we've got with this new type of die that Lisa is bringing into us. It means that we can line these up really easy using just this one die um, and we don't have to run through with lots of little individual dies. So let's see how we get on with this. 
So we can tell you what I will do. I'm going to move my tacky mat out of the way now. I think you'd agree that that works brilliantly, the tacky mat. So hopefully a lot of you, if you've got it on order, um, you'll be looking forward to that. But if you're a little bit more on the fence, hopefully that's um, shown you the advantage of that. And I'll try and use it again sort of, as much as I can um, just to show you how it works. Now, this is so straightforward to line up your dies, I would say. And I think what I will do, as it's the first time I'm cutting it, I'm going to take this down into place. And because it is a plate, we've got plenty of places that we can add our tape without damaging our design. So I'm just going to die cut this for you. Actually, I don't even need to remove that, do I? Because they just pop out like that. Really easy. There we are. I can worry about that in a little bit. So there we are. We have our elements, which are so pretty. So, now I've got to emboss them as well, really, haven't I? It would be rude not to. Now, this might be worth just embossing your pieces individually. So, I'm going to... What do you wonder? I oh, know, it won't fit through the machine yet. I'm just going to bring in my embossing my machine there so I don't have to stand up each time. So, now you can either tape these into place or you can just do a couple at a time, whatever you're comfortable doing here, I would say. But I think it might be quite tricky to emboss all of these all in one go. Let's have a see how we go with this. So I think I could, no, I can't do two. It might be easier, if you can bear with me. I'll do each of these individually. Now, obviously, we could have die cut, um, embossed them all as they were before we had die cut them because then they would have all been in place but then you would have to die cut them and the um, the embossing would have flattened so it's entirely up to you but um, I should do a couple of these that looks so nice and whatever shading you add on here just adding that embossing will just highlight that I think for sure so I'm going to do the flower now you could, as say, tape all of these into place. Um, but I think for the purpose of this, I should do a, do a few for you. It's probably quicker for me to do it this way. Uh, there we are. Oh, that looks super nice. I'm definitely going to do the leaves because they'll look stunning. I tell you what, actually, it's really nice that these little bits of foliage are individual because if you were to use those flowers that I showed you earlier on, um, and if you think that you might want a little bit of foliage in with them, you can always use these from here, couldn't you? Look, you can add them into that, and they'd look really pretty, even onto there. That just changes that completely. I don't know if you can see. Let's pull that on there. Just adding these bits of foliage on and using them with different flowers, I think is just a really nice idea as well. So I think it's actually a really useful set. And the fact that the these bits of um, foliage are individual means you can do all sorts with them. So let me just do one more and then we'll leave the other flowers as they are. Forward and back. Okey doke. 
So you can see actually that these small ones are so easy to line up in there and the detail that we have. Let's lift those up for you to see. I haven't done all the flowers. But the, yeah, the detail, as, as we've come to know with, with Lisa's embossing folders, they never disappoint. So what we can do, let's start building this card now. But as I said earlier on, I've made a five by seven card and I've used the nested or scalloped and stitched nested rectangles for the mats and layers. I've cut the largest one here from textured cardstock. So let's just glue that down. But straight onto just a normal five by seven card blank. I have a black layer, which I've actually cut myself because this isn't um, an in-between layer that we don't have the die for. So this is the largest die and this is the next stitch die. So I wanted one in the middle really just to create a nice black layer behind our artwork here. So we can stick that one down also. Just layering that against the black, especially when we have black stamped um, sentiments. I think it's a really nice, fresh look. So now let's create something a little bit different to what we've done before. So I'm going to put this on two fun pads, I think. Um, so I'm going to add a couple of fun pads to the back. So This is a really nice size actually, so this will work so well on um, A6 cards, but it will also work, as, as you can see, on the 5x7 here, but even square cards. So we can add that there. I think the rose and a little flower can go underneath. And you see, I've used the whole colour, the same colour palette the whole way through. Um, which takes all the guesswork out of the colours and you know that it's going to coordinate perfectly. So I'm going to put two foam pads on there. Just a little bit of glue on the bottom there because this is going to rest on the urn which is already raised up. So I'm going to add the little flower underneath. That doesn't need to be on foam pads. Put that there. And then this green, I think, just sets it off. It needed that little bit extra, didn't it? Um, just to change it up a little bit. So I think, uh, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do that there? Now these don't need to be on foam pads, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue behind these like so. Uh, I can pop that there, and this one. Actually, what's really nice is that Lisa's given us different types of foliage here to make it give us a bit of interest. Um, and I'll just put that one and pop that under there. So that builds together super quick. But as I say, there's nothing stopping you from using flowers from other sets as well, that they, they would work equally as well. In fact, that one looks quite nice there, doesn't it? So this is just really useful. Um, so giving us the flowers with it, but mix and match other flowers and other foliage into that too. So that's our other two flowers we didn't use. And then we just have our sentiment on here as well, which I think I can, let's add, those onto it. So I've got the square foam pads that I need to cut. There we are. <laughs> so I need to put a two on there. Oh dear, hot weather outside is awful today. It hasn't stopped raining. It's really dark. So I'm going to add the birth date. Now I've only put foam pads on part of this because I want this to overlap onto the vase here and the vase is already raised so I don't want to add extra height by adding um, foam pads here so um, we can have that sitting like so alongside. 
and then the happy. I should do the same again because we don't we want that to overlap also onto the bars. There we are. Doesn't that look really, really pretty? And I think using a nice happy fun font like this as well, it just freshens the whole card up and makes it look really nice and modern. But equally, any of the sentiments, but a lot of the die cut sentiments that we have would all work on there equally as well. Spe particularly if you made this a larger um, square piece. So there we are. Um, actually, I'm pleased I've created a, a separate card. It's got two cards, same same design, different embellishments. So it's nice to actually see that in in use for you. So I don't know how much time Lisa is going to get to to demo. You know how these shows go. Um, hopefully, I think she will. Um, she'll demo it. If not, it'll be other ones for you. So hopefully, you've got those in your baskets. Um, remember, Lisa is on today twice. She's on at four o'clock and eight o'clock today, and then shows tomorrow also. Um, so I won't keep you too much longer, so I'll give you a chance to go and get yourself a cup of tea, get yourself sorted, and then settle down for that one also. Um, I'll be with you again on Thursday. So again, I'll be using the ruffled frame for you. Um, where is that? Here we are. I'll be using the ruffled frame, and next time um, I will emboss and I will die cut it for you as well, just to see, uh, show you how that works. Uh, so thanks for sticking with me today. Um, so I'll have a quick look at your comments once when I sit down with a cup of tea in a second. So thanks so much for joining me today and I shall see you all again on Thursday. Take care everyone.